Hey there guys, Neil here, back with a slightly different kind of review. And this is for those of you Android users who want to know a little bit more about ROMing your Android device or want to get a preview of the popular aftermarket ROM known as Lineage OS, which was formerly CyanogenMod. Um, that transition happened towards the end of uh, 2016 when I guess there was some sort of naming issue or some sort of conflict with the name. So CyanogenMod was shut down and uh, Lineage OS was formed as a way to turn your device into as stock of an Android device as possible while adding some key features, enhancing performance, battery life, and um, that sort of thing. So with that, I'll jump right into it. So the first thing to do is um, to go to the Lineage OS to, um, website, see if your device is an officially supported device. They do have a big list of um, supported devices. So generally, the good, a good rule of thumb is if you have a flagship device released in the past couple of years, then there's a good chance you'll be able to install it, and there will be instructions. So I just went to their website, lineageos.org. I headed over to the wiki, and then I clicked on list of supported devices, and you can see that there's a number of devices available. Um, so Aces, uh, Google, Nvidia, Sony, um, Samsung, OnePlus. So um, even though the Nexus um, and Google devices are as stock as you can get, sometimes you might want to get additional uh, performance enhancement or various other features or just have the additional customization offer, um, options that Google may not have built in yet or does not offer. So, for example, checking in on Samsung, you'll see, like, for example, there's a Galaxy Note line, the Galaxy S line, um, and, and even the minis, and even jumping into the Galaxy S7, um, you'll see that you have the Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge, so there's a good number of devices there. Um, checking out, for example, Google, you can you get the, the Lineage OS is supported as far back as the Android 1 second generation, Nexus 4, 5X, 6. So there's a number of different devices supported, so um, the first thing to do is to see if your device is supported is, is to visit their website. Um, the other uh, resource to use is once you're ready to set up the device, you followed um, their instructions, which are um, also on the website. Oh, I don't want to click on that link. I want to click. Yeah, I don't want to go that to that website. I want to go to Lineage OS. Um, is that um, in order to get or before you get additional resources? So let's say, for example, I have my OnePlus 3T, and I'll so I'll click on that appropriate resource, and I want to get instructions on how to install it. Um, OnePlus is pretty is known for being developer friendly and being able to install custom ROMs, so it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, so you do get installation instructions. So when I go to the um, installation page, I can click on how to install Lineage OS, and because the OnePlus three and three T share a similar framework, the it's an all in one installation guide. So I do it does give the instructions on unlocking the bootloader. So if you go that route then you will have to, it will factory reset your device. So the thing to remember here is that you want to back up any data that you might uh, need going forward. So if you have music, pictures, videos, um, SMS, anything like that, you'll want to back that up first. Uh, once you unlock your uh, bootloader, in the case of my OnePlus 3T, I'll be able to install a custom recovery. The one that's generally used now is TouchWiz Recovery, and that's what the installation instructions are based on. And then you'll copy the latest version of the build, which is called a Nightly. Um, they are There will be bugs and things like that in the Nightlies. Generally, the official builds have a few to none, no bugs. So if you're a little bit more cautious, then that's the way to go. But if you're if you want to get the latest and greatest um, features and bug fixes and all of that, then the Nightlies are the way to go. So once you follow the instructions and you got... Lineage OS installed, then you can get additional resources on XDA. But uh, for me, the other thing to check is to also go to a website called XDA Developers. They also have an app in the um, App Store. Uh, so the website itself is xda-developers.com, and what this website is known for is having resources for just about every Android device. And let's say your device is not an officially supported 
um, device on the Lineage OS website, then you can always go to the um, XDA website and see if there's an unofficial build because they might not get regular updates. The, uh, for whatever reason, it's not up to par as far as Lineage OS standards, then um, you can do that. So, for example, so I have the app opened. It will launch if you um, go by the website and you can check out the um, various threads for your device. So, for example, I have for my OnePlus 3T, I can check out various um, guides and rules and um, tips and tricks. So, for example, on the um, official... Well, actually, I'll just go back to my device, and there's a, a f official forum for um, Lineage OS um, for my device, so I can check that out and um, read any additional um, information that I may need to um, to get any information. So, for example, for my 3T. Um, there was an instruction that installing Lineage OS from the official builds of Oxygen, Oxygen OS for the OnePlus 3T will cause an error and it will not allow an installation of Lineage OS. But if you're coming from a beta build, then it'll work just fine. So um, if I had read that from the start, I would have made that switch and then installed the ROM. But doing it after the fact as well works. But I, I always try and recommend to read XDA first, get as much information as you can, see if there's any tips and tricks, and that sort of thing to go with the installation. Um, so let's, I'll give it one more shot and check out, see if I can find, um, and I'll go to my subscribe threads, that'll probably be the easier way to go. Uh, so ROM official weekly Oxygen OS, so I get a um, new build every week. Um, and reading through it will give um, instructions from the developer saying uh, what the ROM is about, what any special instructions like uh, not supporting exposed module, um, installation instructions, uh, generic ones for the ROM itself, and um, any release notes that are of note, so things about new builds, um, installing touch with recovery, any notes there. Um, and then as far as the merged builds of the OnePlus 3 and the OnePlus 3T, so um, things like that, it, reading beforehand will oftentimes save a lot of trouble and will provide insights to any special instructions that are needed for the ROM. So with that, uh, the, one of the biggest benefits of installing a ROM like Lineage OS is that um, you usually get the latest version of Android that is available for and working for your device. So for example, for the OnePlus 3T, um, I have Android, it runs the Android 7.1.2, the latest version, and as of um, August 10th, they've also merged um, the latest security patches. So the August security patches that were released by Google and made publicly available are merged into the Lineage OS build, so the latest Android security um, patches are um, in effect. Um, so Lineage OS itself is on version 14.1, but um, for me the biggest thing of note is the Android version. So the official um, OnePlus 3T builds are on Android 7.1.1, and I think on the May or June, I think the June security builds, so going with a aftermarket ROM usually provides for faster updates. So as far as the UI, you get a pretty standard um, interface, so sliding down twice will give you the brightness bar, uh, notification icons, I can click on edit, and I can um, move around, for example, the battery and the flashlight, or um, Bluetooth if I want it down here. So things like that, you get the usual customization options. Um, and I'll put that back, and then things like, actually I'll put the battery where I can reach it with my thumb. But even, for example, touching the battery will give you the battery usage left. I'm recording a video, and uh, with screen on time, it's a little bit down at five hours, but with general usage and screen off, I get about 10 to uh, 14 hours. So it's about on par with what I get with my um, with the stock build. Um, as far as the settings menu goes, same thing here. I have um, Wi-Fi um, information. I can click on more. I, there's things like tethering, Wi-Fi calling support, um, Android Beam. 
and things like that with a display you get to you can customize a brightness level adaptive brightness but uh, one of the added features of lineage os while i'm on the screen is a thing called live display so if you want to have uh uh, nighttime reading mode or automatic color adjustment of your screen based on the time of day and um, sunlight and uh, based on what your sensors pick up you can um, turn on uh, reduce power consumption but you can also set the color profile based on um, the kind of um, uh, light that it has, light that your sensors pick up, so you can have picture adjustment as well. Um, you can calibrate on screen co um, colors. You can, and I thought this, and then setting the display mode, for example, to automatic will allow you to set the color temperature for day and night, and automatic to outdoor mode, so it'll increase the brightness and saturation based on when a, there is. Uh, bright sunlight. So I just have it set to off because I don't really use it too much, but that option is available. Um, and then you have things like sleep settings, so how fast your screen turns off, screensaver, um, ambient display, uh, tap to wake, and things like that. And then, um, so that's basically the bulk there. And then notification settings or sound settings, uh, battery settings. So if you want to set battery performance, so if you want to have a high, uh, super high performance, uh, quick, balanced efficiency or power save you can do that i have automatic optimization turned on as well so the os will determine um, how much power the device can use so pretty straightforward there and then there's things like gestures so i know the oneplus um oxygen os have builds have a couple of gestures built in for like flashlight and um can opening the camera and all that but with Lineage OS, it adds a few more, so I can not only toggle the camera or the flashlight, but you can open your browser, dialer, view emails, messages, and control music and things like that by drawing various colors. So um, you can you have the carrots or the, basically the arrows or one finger uh, controls or um, basically all sorts of different touch gestures as well, and then double tapping to turn off the screen. Um, you have the option to also control your on-screen bars as well as control what happens, what you see on the power menu, um, what happens when you touch your home button, long press your home button, short back button, and recents menu and all that. So there is that control as well. And then with additional buttons, you can control a notification slider if you have that. So um, total silence, alarms, priority, none, things like that. So you have that control there if your device supports it. Um, and then the final thing in security, you know, you also have your um, pattern, your screen lock, so pattern um, code and all of that. Um, but you can also, um, I thought it was on this screen. Oh, yeah, this it's on the screen as well. But you also have controls for things like viewing a music view visualizer, um, seeing the co cover art and all of that on your um, lock screen. You can double tap to sleep anywhere if you want, blur the background. You can also control lock screen shortcuts if you want to change the default, I think, voice search and camera to something else. So, for example, if you use a certain app all the time or want to have uh, WhatsApp instead of voice control, you can do that as well. So, um, it's a matter of just sl sliding over or I guess it's tapping and you can select an application. So, whatever shortcuts available. Um, or whatever app is available, you can select um, those. So if you have, for example, Tasker installed, you can probably even set a, um, use a specific um, Tasker shortcut. Um, so that's the bulk of it there. Um, there was in the settings menu somewhere, I think it might have, I forget exactly where it is, I'm always losing it. Um, actually, it's in memory. Um, you can also control which apps start when you turn your device on. So let's say, um, every so often you, f you reboot your device or you want to control what um, access your device your apps have when you turn on your device then when you um, go to the lineage OS has a thing called privacy guard so for example um, I'll pick VLC for example um, for example if I don't think it needs to or I don't have a reason for it to start um, when my device boots so I turn that off if I wanted to run in the background I can see that it was used um, over about 1,800 times, but I don't want it to have access, so I'll do that. 
it says keep awake so I don't want it to keep my device awake so I'll turn that off um, and it gets audio focus and things like that so if you find that your device is draining battery and you want a little bit more control then you can do that as well um, same thing for example here with uh, Firefox it wants to start at boot it wants to run in the background uh, it wants to keep itself awake so and things like that you also have control in, line in lineage OS so um, that's a pretty nifty feature as well um, and then there's a thing called privacy guard which allows you to control um, how much access your apps have to your per personal information so for example um, let's say I am at I'm looking at Google Earth for example I don't uh, want it to have um, control of it, or how, want to control how much control it has then um, I'll turn it off first um, I don't know where it went but let's say I'll use Patreon as an example I see that has the ability to keep the screen away but it's never used so it's okay but um, if there is a if there's an app for example that I don't want to keep, like keep um, uh, running in the background for example po Pocket does that so I can turn it off um, so you have that example, you have those various, um, control options as well. So, um, any app that you don't want running in the background, then, um, you can turn it or deny it access. So it's no longer able to do that. And, um, it should improve battery life and you know, you have that control, um, going on. So that's really the bulk of it. Um, as I mentioned, I recommend always checking out the Lineage OS website for um, updates, reading their blog, so you can see on July, or their changes since July 3rd, this was posted on August 8th, you can see what improvements were made, changes were made, any new devices that were added, and things like that. Um, you get you can get um, wiki information, so news on updates on your device, instructions on installation, all that good stuff. And then the additional resource is the XDA developers website or the, their official app to check stuff out. And then if you want to keep track of changes that are being made to Lineage OS, you can check out the Lineage OS, sorry, the Lineage OS change log on this by doing a Google search or installing their app and selecting your device so you, can, you get specific um, information. So for example, on the latest update, there were updates to the camera. Um, as well as the Jelly browser that's built into the device and Wi-Fi controls and things like that. And you can go back a few um, changes to see what's going on as far as changes and, as, and then things that are coming up as well. So allowing Bluetooth addresses from proprietary devices, telephony updates, and things like that. And then the app itself also has um, theme support and color coding and that sort of thing. So you have a little bit of material design and customization going on there as well. So that's really all there is for that. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, you can always find me on Twitter at PatelN01. This review and all reviews can be found on YouTube at youtube.com slash PatelN01. And um, if, or PatelN01.com for all the... I lost my train of thought. So YouTube reviews at youtube.com slash PatelN01. There's a podcast and all the... Uh, subscription links and social media links and all that can be found on the website pateln01.com um, but that's all for this particular review so if you have any questions you can always get in touch with me I'll just see what I can do to help or point you in the direction of other resources um, androidcentral.com is also a good place to check out um, updates in device um, forums and things like that for developer reviews but doing and then if that fails doing a google search to see what's going on um, in the roaming community for your device is always a good way to go and the main, biggest thing too is that if you're not sure what's going on or you're not sure you're doing something right but you managed to install a custom recovery the best thing to do is do a backup before you install the ROM or wipe or clear anything that way if anything happens you can um, restore that your prior uh, or your reset your device to original factory settings so at least you have um, that going on but that is all for this particular review. Thanks for watching and listening, and until next time.